Welcome back to my No BS Gear Review channel. So let's continue our deep dive into CGRB Maximal. If you're watching it on the day of the release, I thank you for being a member on my channel. And if you're watching it a couple days later, I appreciate you stopping by and viewing. So let's jump right back in. Hammer time. Time for the Hype Smasher. I just dated myself. Yeah, I graduated uh, college in the 90s. Anyway, we are clamping the knife in this wooden metal rubber clamping device that's designed to emulate human hand, in my non-medical opinion. I test the lock function before I proceed to make sure my clamping the knife did not impact the functionality of it. The Hype Smasher itself is a modified arbor press. I took the lever out to allow this ram to fall freely. The ram weighs two and a half pounds and uh, I keep the dropping distance consistent at six inches. And uh, what I do is I mark the side of the ram visible to me level with the opening here to account for how deep the blade sits in the trough. Another thing I do to keep my tests repeatable from blade to blade is measure the distance between the striking point and uh, the pivot. And for the blades that are three and a half inches or less, it's two and a quarter inches distance. Let me know if you have any comments about my methodology or have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And now it's time to smash. Okay, the knife didn't unlock. Let's check the lock function still working as before. The blade is not loose in the clamp. No unlock here. Does anybody think it will last three strikes without unlocking? Hit the like if you do. We'll find out soon enough. Give it a mental cunt down. The knife holds up. Three out of three. Good score. And now I'm taking the knife out of the clamp to see if it still functions as it did before. And that's where I do uh, checks for blade play and visual inspection for damage. I detect just a slight side-to-side -side play, no up and down play, which is good. That's always a concern here. And the function remained as snappy as before. So the system survives this test and now I'm ready to test Premial Maximal, the carbon fiber version with a slightly thinner blade I almost skipped that, but then realized that the blade was a little thinner, and so the engagement line between the ram lock and the blade is slightly different, so I want to make sure it is as tough as its less expensive compadre. I'd like to mention that I had to remove the pocket clip to accommodate either one of these knives in the clamp here, and it was a total pain in the butt, because artisan employees use thread locker compound. I don't know what it is. It reminds me crazy glue a lot. They use it in quantities that are unrivaled by anything. You don't need to glue this knife together, guys. It's a pretty well-designed piece, as you just saw. It survived the first strike. Uh, I think I forgot to test the lock between the strikes. Let's do it now. Yeah, still working. We're good to go. Anyway, go easy on the glue. It's a sign of a cheap production. To have that much glue on your knife. It's just not necessary. Or at least use something that is easily removed. I had to heat up the screws to take them out. Sorry about the rant here. The functionality of this knife is solid. There's no play side to side, no play up and down, and the function remains as it was. Which is a little bit of a surprise. I thought it would perform identically to the minimal maximum, which literally means I got more bang for my buck. Awesome. All right, we're done with the easy test, and now we're going to get into something even more nerve-wracking, namely toughness test, as in a system sense of the word. So I'm doing it a little differently now. I attach it to my trigger gauge to see what kind of force I'm exerting on the blade. I bend it 15 degrees at uh, 5.2 pounds. The distance from the center of the lanyard hole to the insertion point of the blade is exactly six inches for this knife. So to calculate the torque, all I need to do is multiply whatever force I'm reading on the gauge by six, and it'll give me inch pounds. 
easy peasy. So please don't confuse this torque value with a Shopee toughness test that's reported in the toughness versus hardness tables. This is different. We are putting the strain on the steel here. And we continue to do so in my torque test where I subject all the pins, pivot hardware, and even screws to the immense amount of torque in a direction they're not designed to take torque in some cases, like screws, to see if I can uh, cause some kind of uh, damage to the system. So I don't see any damage to the blade. Um, there might be slight bending at the tip. I will check it for flatness in a second here. There's no play up or down, no play side to side. I adjusted the play out of it uh, after the hype smasher because this knife did have some play there. And now I am inserting the Premial Maximal into this wooden clamp. So as you can see, the clamp is at its tightest uh, closed up setting. And I just insert the very, very tip of the knife in and then I hammer the blade uh, to about 5 16 depth from the tip. That gives me the exact six inches that I was mentioning. And uh, now we're ready to test this knife. This is the SF2 steel. And it's a little thinner than the RPM9 blade. So I'm uh, nervous to say the least because I've broken 154CM tips off on some other knives from different companies, including Korsha, for example. So, you know, we'll see. I'm starting to like this knife, so I really don't want to break it. And here we go. Take a deep breath. That's 15 degrees on the dial. And we're good. Next. Okay, so it took a little bit less force than on the thicker blade, as expected. Those stainless steels are very similar to one another as far as their mechanical properties are, believe it or not. All this agony over performance, but in actual yield strength or tensile strength, these blade steels are in the very same ballpark. Let's see. We're running just a few percentages less than the thicker blade twisting test. Yeah, so uh, screws are not designed to work in shear and definitely doing this puts them in shear. Also, the pivot hardware gets stressed out a lot and uh, the stop pins, especially where they inserted into the liner material. Checking for play, no play up or down, side to side, nothing. I'm looking at the blade straightness on both knives and I feel like I'm actually seeing a very, very small movement there, meaning it's bent just slightly. So I need to test that theory. And for that, I'm going to use my test block that came with my hardness tester. Yeah, I definitely feel like there might be the bend in the direction where I was pulling. And I'm trying to come up with a method here that will take the guesswork out. So here's what I came up with. This is the calibration block uh, that came with my leap tester. It's flat. I put the blade pressed down on the primary bevel. And as you just saw, there's some rocking. There's no rocking on the opposite side. So it clearly indicates to me that there is a small bend. Looking at it, uh, I think it's uh, no more than one degree. So I don't want my viewers to look at it as negative. I think the engineering on this knife is solid because it yielded before breaking at pretty severe torque. The torques were in a 30 inch pound magnitude. And now let's take a look at the data that we've collected and score the knife. So under three inch length gets at a point. Both of them are identical in that respect. Both weight under four ounces, another point. And edge to weight ratio was a little higher for the carbon fiber version or what I call maximal premial. One hand in, pocket clip gets one point, force in and out was under four pounds, another point, and retention was good on the acceleration test. Blade deployment 
uh, three ways to deploy the blade comfortably for either knife. And detent force was between 1.2 and 4 pounds, so not a point. It is a finger safe knife, and the smasher did not unlock it. There was no damage after the spine smash test. Another point there. Complex alloy. Both steels are modern steel composition. Neither one is powder metallurgy. And heat treat was in a good range, so one point each there. Both tips remained attached to the blade, but both blades bent just a little bit. And the minimal maximal was a little bit more prone to developing a blade play. The two knives score two and three points for edge retention with the corresponding edge sharpness loss of 34 and 20.1 percent. For blade geometry both get one point for having behind the edge thickness of less than 30 thousandths of an inch. Both have pretty high flat grind so very slicey. Another point gained by both. The effective or cutting board edge was lacking below half the overall edge length so zero points there. And now we're getting into differentiators. Materials and quality suffered from uh, excessive amount of the Loctite. Bragging rights are not associated with a mass-produced knife made in uh, People's Republic. Both are made out of corrosion-resistant steel and both have very universal pleasant-to-use blade shape. Those are 10% increases to the total score. And now we're looking at the retail price. 49 for the minimal maximal and 69 bucks for the premium maximal. And so the total scores are 20 and 22.1 respectively. So where do these scores land them? amongst the knives that have been tested already. Well, the Premium Maximal lands in a second place. CVV Yonder and Oz Machine Rosie are tying for the first place here. And the Minimal Maximal is therefore in the fifth place. Now let's look at the joy adjustment scores and rearrange our knives based on that scoring. Remember, I added decimal points and now it's a multiplier. So let's see where we end up. That rearrangement puts both in a fifth and sixth place. So, as far as joy goes, Oz Machine Rosie is in the first place so far. And now we're going to look at bang for the buck, which is an important score for somebody. Let me rearrange the column here. To score in this criteria, I divide the total number of points by the price of the knife. And right now, Gonzo F3 is leading in the first place putting CGRB Minimal Maximal in the third place and CGRB Premium Maximal in the fifth place. Back to the straight out points. Question is, did these knives meet the designer's intent? Tastes like Chinese budget knife. It is a Chinese budget knife. No, it's DCA's most recommendable Chinese budget knife. Well, it did score rather high. Why, you ask? Systems Engineering 101. It is because the designer actually had a set of well-defined requirements and they were based in his deep knowledge of the market and understanding EDC in particular. My only regret is that he picked Artisan mainly because their worksmanship lags behind and not because of their selection of steel or handle materials.